This is an example of the problems at the medium level, or level 2, of the Laplace Transforms game in Circuit Tutor. This game is found on the website rather than in the downloadable software. Okay, so first of all, we always have examples here available at a variety of uh, levels of difficulty. And it's always a good idea to look at some of those examples um, before you start. So I'll just show an example here um, of a typical problem at that level, and it does show all the details. So if you have any difficulty, um, looking at examples might uh, very well help you with that. Um, this particular game also has a feature where you can do user-selected examples, where you basically would choose a particular functional form um, that you wanted to use um, and generate an example of that. Um, you could also make that time shifted if you check this box. Let's go back and now let's work problems um, at the medium level. Okay, so this is giving us a function, uh, which in this case is a cosine function of 12t times u of t um, with a prefactor of negative 6. Now, in accounting for that prefactor, um, because we certainly wouldn't find this exactly in a table, um, we need to use the linearity property of Laplace transforms. And in case um, you don't remember that, well, um, actually I'll just reopen that. Um, you can always click on that tab um, to bring up the properties. But linearity is something really it would be very good to know um, because that's just a very basic property of Laplace transform. So that follows directly from the fact Laplace transforms are defined in terms of an integral of this f of t function. And therefore, if we multiply that function times a constant, that will have the effect of just multiplying the Laplace transform by the same constant. So that's called the scaling or homogeneity property. And likewise, they also follow additivity, which means that if you take the Laplace transform of the sum or perhaps difference of two functions, that would be equivalent to taking the Laplace transform of each function separately, the f1 of s or f2 of s, and then adding or subtracting those. So again, together these are known as linearity, and that's something you probably want to just remember because it's very fundamental to Laplace transforms. Okay, so um, if you don't remember the formula for the Laplace transform of a cosine, um, we can pull up the table. Now, if I launch that just by clicking on this link, which is always available here, um, that will actually put it in the new tab of the browser. However, if I want to have that where I can actually look at it while I'm working the problems, which would probably be uh, convenient, it might actually be better to, instead of doing that, to right-click on this link and then select Open Link in New Window, which will give you a new browser window that then you can position um, next to the one that you're working in. And uh, so now we can reduce the size of that, bring it over here, and then do the same thing with our main window. And just put those side by side for convenience. And now it allows us to actually look at the table while we're uh, working the problem, which might be a little bit easier. OK, so first of all, we have a template-based interface here to enter the uh, equations, just as you normally do in the downloadable software. Um, and we have to notice that there are several different palettes of terms available. So we have to choose the appropriate palette. Now what we're being asked to do here is to find the Laplace transform of this or to enter g of s basically. So we're going to enter an answer as it indicates here in the s domain. So a common problem is where students try to enter something that they're actually not being asked for. And so like any problem that you're trying to work say on a test, it's very important to read the problem and understand what you're being asked for before you start to answer it. Because if you answer a different question, your answer might be right, but it'll still be marked wrong. So to avoid frustration, be sure you check what you're really being asked for and that you enter that corresponding thing. So here, these terms in the time domain palette, um, those are all functions of time. Notice they have t in them. That's clearly not what we want because we want something that is instead in the Laplace domain. There cannot be any t's. Instead, it would be functions of s. And likewise, the time shifted palette is also functions of time. Here it's just t minus t naught. Um, so we need to make sure we use the Laplace domain palette to enter something in the Laplace domain. So that sounds obvious, but it's important. OK, so for the cosine function, we can look in our table and see that the cosine omega t u of t, the Laplace transform is s over s squared plus omega squared. And of course, um, in the tutorial, that's uh, you have access to the actual derivation of that. OK, so uh, but it is multiplied also by a negative 6, so we're going to use the linearity property there. So we need the, uh, a 
ratio of numbers here. So we're going to use the fraction term, which you will often need. So I can click on that. Um, if I don't want it or decide I need something different, I can always drag it out and remove it. I can also uh, drag it. So you have your choice there of how to insert that. Okay, so for the cosine function, I need s over s squared plus omega squared. So let's do the denominator first. That's just this term here. And the omega, of course, is whatever multiplies the t inside the argument of the cosine, as you indicate here. So that's the 12. And notice here there's no squared, so I need to enter actually the omega squared. So that will be 12 squared, or 144. OK, so for the numerator, I need just s. So I'll put that in, and I'll put that to the 1 power. But then let's not forget that we have a coefficient of negative 6 that multiplies that. So we need a constant multiplying the s. So I'll insert a constant, and it's just a real constant here. Um, and oh, let's put that in front, I think. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'll just put it in front. And the constant there should be negative 6. OK, so that should be correct. Um, now, if you do get stuck at any point for any reason, um, you can always click Give Up, as always in Circuit Tutor. Um, there is no penalty for doing that. You'd simply be given, uh, you'll be shown the solution to this problem, and then you would be given a new problem of the same type. Um, and if we mess up completely, we can just cl click uh, Clear Equation uh, to get rid of what's in there. OK, so let's check that. And that is correct. OK, now you always have access to a detailed solution if you um, weren't sure about how to do this, you could always look at this, and it would actually show you all of the steps in great detail like it does in the examples. So that's always available to you as an option if you want to review. OK, so that's one problem. Now let's do a second problem at the medium level, which will be a little bit different type. So this time we have a sine function with a negative 10 prefactor. And notice also that there is um, a phase angle for this function. So we need to look in our table now and find sine with a phase angle. So that would correspond to this entry in the table. And so we see that's going to be s sine phi, where phi is the phase angle, plus omega cosine phi, divided by s squared plus omega squared. And of course, we also have this coefficient of negative 10 out front, so we have to make sure we don't forget about that. So once again, we need to be in the Laplace domain. So I'm going to click on that. Um, I'll use the fraction template here. And let's put the uh, s squared plus omega squared first in the denominator. And here our omega, again, is whatever multiplies t. So that's 10. So when we square that, that will be 100. So I'll enter 100 there. And next, we need the s uh, sine phi. And so I'll put an s term in there. Um, actually, let's just put a constant term first, because I need a number to multiply that times an s. And then I'm going to need uh, plus that cosine phi. Um, and actually, I can anticipate the phi is going to be, cosine is going to be uh, negative, but then I'll have uh, this, so that'll actually be a plus. So I'll use a plus sign here. And that'll be plus another constant, which I'll put over here. OK, so that's kind of what I'm going to need. And then I'll use a calculator here to find sine of phi. But then I remember, I have to also multiply that times the negative 10. So I'm going to take sine of 150 times negative 10. So I'll do that on a calculator here. So I have a sine of uh, 150, and then uh, times negative 10. And that's going to give me a negative 5, because of course the sine of 150 is minus 0.5, as you may have known. So that's negative 5. OK. and. Uh, so that's negative 5 here. And then we'll put the exponent of s is 1. We need to fill that in. And then for the second constant, that's going to be uh, plus omega cosine of phi. Um, so the omega is uh, 10. So we need 10 times the cosine of phi. But we also need to multiply by negative 10. So that'll be negative 100 times cosine of phi. So let's go on the calculator and do that. So I have negative 100 times the cosine of the 150 degrees. And that will give us 86.6, because of course the cosine was 0.866, so that times the, well, actually negative uh, 0.866, so that times the 
a negative 100 gave us 86.6. So we'll go ahead and put that in as 86.6. And again, we check that we've included both the negative 10 and the cosine function and the omega. So we've included all three of those things. So we'll check that. And that is correct. And once again, we have a detailed solution available here. If you need that, if you're unsure about any of those steps, then you can see all the details here. So that does conclude uh, the example of the medium level.